Hello everyone, I'm Leslie Cornwell, Certified Nurse Midwife with Empowering Midwifery Education. This course has to do with midwife locum positions. A legal disclaimer we put at the beginning of all of our presentations. This information is for general use only. Content is not intended to substitute for professional, legal, or clinical advice. We strive to keep our information as accurate and timely as possible, but make no promises and guarantees it will work for your unique situation. So the objectives of this introductory part is so that the students can understand what is a local midwife. They'll be able to understand who is a good candidate to be a local midwife. Um, why is now the best time to consider looking into midwife locum assignments? They'll be able to talk about the different types of locum assignments and the pros and cons of being a locum midwife. So I'm just going to start out with I made this course because it's really, really important to me with my background being a local midwife the last seven years and doing various parts of the country. I've seen maybe there's a dozen midwives out there doing what we're doing and doing it full time, filling in. And then very, very few of them are really good at it. They understand the contracts, they understand how to negotiate, they know how to make the locum assignments really work for their situation and scenario and have clear expectations of what the assignments look like. So there's very few locum midwives and then very, very few of them that do a really, really good job at it. So I wanted to make a course so that we could have more locum midwives. We can have more temporary fill-in positions available for people in the hospital setting, birth centers, home, that are looking for this type of lifestyle. They want to um, travel. They want to fill in for other practices. They don't want to be committed to a long-term permanent position, and locum assignments are a great opportunity for that. So we'll go to the basics. What exactly is a locum midwife? So a locum midwife is someone that they can do different aspects of prenatal care, birth, postpartum, they can help in the hospital, home, birth center. The responsibilities are pretty typical to a permanent midwife. The biggest difference is locum, temporary, travel, fill-in. It could be for resource per diem in a long-term contract. It could be what is more traditionally seen. You're going there for 13 weeks to fill in for maternity leave. You're going to fill in for um, someone left the the team and they are interviewing and it takes a couple months to get credentialed and get their license in the state so the main goal of a local midwife is filling in the gaps short term of where a practice is needing help and it's traditionally in the hospital settings um, it's definitely something that you have to have a clear understanding because you could be a laborist, you could be clinic work, you could be full scope midwifery, you could be 24 hour call, you could be 12 hour call, you could be a bunch of days in a row, you could be scattered, you could just be part time, full time or resource. So there's a lot of variations, but the big difference a locum midwife helps for short term to fill in a need while they're trying to find permanent staff. So who is a good candidate for being a locum midwife? This is a great question because I get I get comments all the time. Who's a good business owner? Who's a good locum midwife? Who should be employed? Who who fits that more 1099, more unpredictable lifestyle and enjoys that and it fits their personality? Um, so definitely people that have a certain mindset. You have to be very positive. You have to enjoy challenges. You have to be willing to learn new things. You have to be a team player. You have to go and above and beyond the typical midwife role because you're you're filling in. You're not getting an orientation. They expect you to have. Experience. Experience, they expect you to jump in and fill the need that they have um, and so you've got to be more adaptable you've got to be willing to as long as safety is not being in play give and take different styles of how to practice in different places quickly skills you have to be really really good at what you're doing I would encourage you at least to have three to five years of experience as a midwife before you consider doing a locum assignment because you have to have really strong midwifery skills they're not going to mentor you they're not going to orientate you they expect you to look at the policies and understand things to jump on the fly to do an emergency situation they're going to expect you to have critical thinking skills, flexibility, time management, prioritization. You can just jump in in pretty much any midwifery scenario and be able to handle it safely. So that's really, really important. Um, you may 
you have to have clear on expectations of your skills, what certifications you have and what you don't have. So if you don't do first assist, you have to be very clear, I don't have that skill set. If you don't do next bullet on insertions, IUDs, colposcopies, certain procedures that they want you to do at the, the facility, you have to have very clear expectations. This is my skill set. This is not my skill set. This is what I can do. This is what I can't do. Um, but most of the time, if you're going to be a local midwife, you're going to have NRP, BLS, ACLS, most of them want you to have first assist. Most of them are going to want you to be able to do a good chunk of the medical procedures in the clinic and in the inpatient setting. So you have to have really strong midwifery skills. Um, you definitely want to have the experience, the willing to be adaptable, try new things, have a good positive mindset. If you're somebody that likes routines, doesn't like new things, doesn't embrace change, um, it's hard to get along with and work with, um, you're kind of just comfortable in doing your typical routine, locum assignments may not be the best fit for you. It may be just working for someone else and letting them handle all the stuff in the backdrops because locum assignments credentialing paperwork there's a lot of um, things needed to prep for the assignment you get one to two days orientation if you're lucky and you just hit the ground running and you have to be confident that you can handle whatever is being brought towards you um, a cultural diversity experience um, someone that the more you do locums it's an added benefit of being a locum midwife you see so many different ways of doing things you fill in for different cultures and communities and um, parts of the the U.S. and around the world, you could be an international locum midwife. You don't have to be just U.S. based. Um, so you definitely want to have strong training and skill set and keep awareness of your biases even more than a typical midwife in an organization has to do because there's so many cultural differences of who you're serving and you have to jump right in and be very conscientious of how you're saying things, how you're approaching things um, and not making any assumptions and asking questions of kind of what is the norm and you're gonna to have to catch on to things quickly of how things are brought up if you don't know an acronym you don't know um, a certain belief or culture you have to definitely ask okay who's the majority of the patients we're gonna serve tell me some things give me some books and resources the first two weeks of my locum assignments I'm diving into policies I'm diving into understanding the chain of command where emergency equipment is um, asking for resources to learn about the culture like the first two weeks you're really spending a lot of time jumping in what would take a typical midwife a month month and a half of orientation you're trying to condense that down to just a few days so you have to be willing to learn you have to know um, if you can handle anything that comes through the door that first night what would you do how would you approach it um, where are those emergency supplies and chain of command and protocols in place easy to get along with you'd be able to you're friendly people can ask you questions you can be able to ask other people questions without um, feeling like you're causing tension hostility you want to ask questions in a confident way not an incompetence like hey where's the supplier how do I do this how do I do this they'll start wondering it takes a lot to get the trust of the midwives and the team and the colleagues and so you have to over exaggerate your history and your skill set and your competencies to them because you have to quickly build up that trust that would take time that the other permanent staff builds up so you need to be able to accelerate those skills making people really like you you're really jumping in full force and some people are okay with that and some people so it's definitely now is the best time to do locum midwife assignments. I've been doing them the last few years and since COVID, since the healthcare shortage, since there's so much shortage of nurses and providers with physicians and nurse practitioners and midwives retiring at an accelerated rate there is such a huge demand i mean the opportunities the last even just six eight months for doing locum assignments have quadrupled so you can have multiple choices before you'd be like oh there's one here and there that comes up do i want to go there or do i want to take a break from locum assignments versus right now i could choose from seven different places to go to and they would all want me to go there so it's a very different environment. There's huge demands and it's only going to continue to increase. So 
when you're thinking of doing locum assignments, you want to think about the um, contracts, the collaborating relationship with the physicians, the midwives. Why do they have a locum assignment? If they're severely short staffed and they have two, three midwife open locum assignments, just know you're going to work really hard and they're having shortages probably of nurses and midwives as well. So being clear of safety and boundaries and chain of command and um, a clear understanding of why they have a locum assignment open. Um, the more locum assignments there are, the more you can compete them against each other, the more you can be. Labor and delivery nurses sometimes will make more than a locum midwife does, but if you've got a few opportunities and you can kind of compete them against each other and say, hey, I don't care which place I go to, it seems very cultural, similar, um, one pays a little more. Hey, are you willing to come up a little bit? Um, I, I can come here instead. So you can get sign-on bonuses, you can get extension bonuses, you can get overtime, you can get call-in pay you can get um, and you have to be careful because there's two very specific midwife um, assignments out there. There's the 1099 locum assignments and then there's the W-2 assignments. So if it's more of a nursing based agency, they're going to treat you more like a W-2. And so you've got overtime, you get insurance from them, they give you retirement, they, they treat you, your W-2, you're an employee of them. Um, I'm not as big of a fan of those type of locum assignments. They're not as burst with working with midwives and providers and they treat you like a nurse many times and some of the challenges and the verbiage and the contracts. Um, I'll give you an example for if you're W-2 and legally you're supposed to have a, a break every four hours and you're supposed to have every 12 hours a 30-minute lunch break and you're supposed to legally have it signed off by a supervisor. If you're a midwife at night and laborist, you're not going to call on the obstetrician to come in for 30 minutes at 2 in the morning for you to get a lunch break. So some of these things that are applicable to a W-2 are, are a little challenging being a midwife locum, um, but we'll talk about that more in detail. So most of the provider agencies, cross-country locum, locum tenants, they treat you as a 1099 and independent contractor, and there's a lot more benefits that way um, with negotiating and writing things off than you do have with the W-2 aspect. Um, so definitely the more locum assignments that are out there, the more you're in demand, the more that you can have people compete against you. Um, IHS facilities, Indian Health Services and government facilities, you don't have as much negotiating power um, as you do with like private and nonprofit healthcare systems. Um, but you'd be surprised sometimes the agency will take a little bit of less of their cut because maybe you've got three agencies for the exact same assignment and you're competing the agencies against each other, not just um, maybe you do want this location in this assignment, but you've got a couple agencies competing to give you the best bids to work with them on it. So you have the power, you have the opportunity you can travel anywhere in the country. You can go to Alaska, Hawaii. You can go to the East Coast, West Coast, somebody, somewhere warm in the winter. You can go anywhere you want, just depending on what you're willing to do for services and um, what your goals are with the locum assignments. So there's definitely more flexibility in your schedule compared to a typical permanent staff. Um, when you're 1099, when you make the terms, you say, this is my pay, this is the hours I can do, this is the schedule I want. And if they don't wanna give it to you, then you just find another assignment to go do. So you definitely have more negotiating of power with um, how to pick the best assignment that is a good fit for you. So um, do you want to work holidays? Do you always want holidays off? Do you want um, overtime? Do you want extra pay for covering the holidays and the weekends? Um, everything is negotiable. So don't ever take anything off the table you assume you can't have when you're doing locum versus if you're permanent. Once you sign that employment contract, you don't have any negotiating room. It's pretty standard. It's nurse practitioners, midwives get pretty standard contracts with organizations. But when you are doing a 1099, everything is negotiable because you're a mini business within the agency.
Um, you can definitely improve your skill sets. You can expand your resources if you've worked at the same facility for a long time and you want to get exposed to different cultures and um, experience and broaden your skill set. It's an amazing opportunity to do that. If you want to go somewhere warm, you want to travel with your kids, you homeschool, you want to just experience different aspects of midwifery in different parts of the country and the world, this is an amazing way to do it. And it's a great way to see, can I handle any Anything that's brought to me can I clearly communicate do I have the skills of what it takes to be adaptable in any scenario or am I pretty comfortable that I'm always doing the same skills every day at my um, regular nine-to-five job so it's definitely got some great benefits to consider doing open assignments that way giving back to your colleagues i don't think people realize the value of midwife locum assignments you're helping to fill a need short term there is definite need they're accelerating the credentialing process they're accelerating the orientation there is a reason they have a locum assignment available um, so whether it's a home birth birth center practice and they are on maternity leave and they don't want to turn away clients or a hospital system that's opening in a new department and interviewing their great team the this they want their summer vacations. They want to have not everybody on the team working overtime when somebody is on maternity leave. You filling in and considering doing a midwife locum assignment adds immense value to your midwife colleagues and to the healthcare organizations and the patients they serve. There is a reason there's a short staffed position and you can come in and fill it quickly for them. So the other cool part of being a midwife locum is it's a break from the routine. Some people get burnout from the healthcare system and administration and working for the same organization and seeing things change slowly. Sometimes it's nice to say, you know, I want to get a break from going to staff meetings and going to all these required trainings and going to all these quality things. I'm just going to go fill in for three to six months until I figure out where is the best next place for me. Maybe you're starting a business and you just need some revenue coming in while your business gets going. Maybe you quit that job and you don't really know what you want to do next, but you need some revenue coming in while you're trying to figure that out. Um, it's definitely a, a great way to just visit somewhere warm, get a different routine, not have nearly the responsibilities that a main, main permanent midwife has on the team. Your job is to fill in for coverage, take care of patients. It's not to learn the organization's mission, attend all the extra meetings, all the extra things in the backdrops. You don't have to worry about the drama between the nurses and the midwives and the physicians and the, the team and the department and the history. You're there short term. There's so many times I've smiled where I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad I don't have to work here a long time. I'm only here for a month. I'm only here for six weeks. I'm only here for three months. I can do a lot of things temporarily, just focusing on the patients and safety and care versus having to worry about the dynamics because I'm not there long term. I'm not there to improve the organization. I am there to fill a short term need. So there's different types of locum assignments. Um, they vary greatly. I would say the most common one you're going to see is a full-time position, 40 to 50 hours a week, um, doing 13-week assignments. It could be clinic work, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. It could be a combination of full scope, where you have two office days and two 12-hour calls. It could be just strictly laborist for 12 hours, for 24 hours, depending on if you're doing the community-based setting, you're doing high volume, um, high risk uh, hospital setting. Um, I tend to lean towards contracts that are more what my style of midwifery and comfort level is. I tend to choose community-based settings, lower volume, less resources, um, because that's where I'm more comfortable. I'm not comfortable with super, super high risk and assembly line and doing two, 300 births a month. I tend to pick assignments where it's 30 to 60 births a month. Um, they have different challenges to them and I'm more comfortable with the challenges that they have. Um, you still get high risk patients that come in, but it's not nearly a majority of the volume. So you just have to have clear expectation, like um, do you have to do weekend call? Is it weekdays? 
are you on call at all is it strictly office um, what is the job description because sometimes these assignments are very vague when they promote them and so you have to ask lots of great questions to make sure it's a good fit for what you're looking at doing and don't be surprised just because it's three months that they may ask you to extend if they have an additional need um, they may ask you to stay on resource after the fact. Um, I have really enjoyed keeping privileges at multiple different places because they can call me up at the last minute. You have a huge advantage when you're already hospital privileges turnkey. If it's a hospital facility, it's going to take them two to three months to get somebody that doesn't have a license in the state. As soon as you have a license in the state, it's more like two to three weeks of hospital credentialing. That's the big advantage of doing IHS facilities because they will accept any state license. So you just have to do the hospital privilege component side. But if there's multiple people out there trying to take an assignment, you have an advantage if you're already a privilege there, you already have a state license, you're already familiar with that organization you are going to have a better chance of getting in there and they're more likely going to ask you to fill in for a contract for a contract that's available so there's definitely some advantages to being established in multiple different places getting good relationships built up depending on what your goals are with the locum assignments is this going to be a long-term style of midwifery you want to do the next five to ten years or is it just short term to fill in a financial need while you figure out your next job or while you're starting a business so there's different facilities that do locum assignments you can do them with hospitals you can do them with clinics you can do with a birth center home birth practices I don't see as many on the mainstream promotion for birth centers and home birth practices because they don't have nearly the financial wherewithal that hospitals and clinics and bigger organizations do to put these locum assignments out there. I tend to see more grassroots approaches for locum assignments where the midwives will support each other. Maybe they went to school together and the one um, just closed her practice so she was a partner with somebody else and is taking a break and she comes to help out her colleague across the country. So I do see more organic morphed um, locum assignments. They don't really call them that. They just ask um, their colleagues to help them out and support them if they're able to um, for vacations and for different things whether it's in the local area or they have someone come i've seen quite a few really cool hybrid contracts where every three months uh, a midwife colleague will come into town for a month and cover for them um, so that they can have vacation and break and catch up with life so there's so many ways you can do locum assignments so the scope of service is very greatly you can be an educator you could be a director role you could be helping them to get a department going and consulting services. Most of them are going to be full scope, doing the clinic or on-site, on-call, laborist, interpartum management. I would say the first three are the more common ones, but don't ever hesitate when you have certain unique skill sets um, you can offer. I mean, I just interviewed for a really cool um, laborist position but we also they're opening a brand new department and so with my background in business administration and consulting work I added some extra value compared to a, another midwife that I can help them with getting policies and protocols and the department systems going because it's a brand new midwifery practice. So your compensation rates they typically will offer you a very transparent um, Oh, hourly rate, sometimes on call, sometimes overtime, sometimes bonuses. It just depends on the assignment and contracts and if it's the government or it's the hospital system. Um, I usually don't worry about negotiating the compensation until I interview and then they can see my skills and they can see the value I can bring and then I try to negotiate a little bit like hey and being very objective and fair because you're making a long-term relationship with the agency just as much as you are with the different organizations. There's not a ton of midwife locum agencies out there. There's just a handful of them. So you want to have a really good relationship with them all because if you disrespect and you don't decide to do an assignment at the last minute or something happens, it, there's very few um, opportunities to work with other agencies. So you just want to be very conscientious of respectful to the agency, the organization, and what your goals are. Always think win-win situations. So the pros of being a midwife um, locum are you get to travel the country, you get to travel the world, you get to see so many amazing places and you get paid for it. Most of the travel assignments as providers, they cover your housing, they cover your travel, they tra cover the vehicle, the 
um, airline, it just depends. You can choose more all-inclusive rates, which would mean you can take your camper, you can choose something that's an hour and a half, two hours away, and you stay at a friend's house. Like you can hybrid, um, there's typically two levels of rates. It's the all-inclusive rate where you have to take care of everything, which is typically a higher reimbursement, or you take the more lower reimbursement and then they cover all the travel expenses. So you just have to determine how much do you want to work, what do you want the terms to look like, what are you looking for, and don't ever hesitate. Like, help create needs in the area. I've helped create really cool locum assignments because I knew there was a need in the area, and that organization didn't even think about using a locum midwife. So don't ever hesitate to just say, well, there's not that many jobs out there for locum midwives or what I'm looking for. See where there's a need in your community and creatively create and make your own locum assignment. I've done that many times before. So the cool part is with being a locum, you have typically more time with the patients than the average midwife because you don't have to do policies, you don't have to worry about all the other stuff in the backdrops, you are here to take care of patients. That's what they're hiring you for, you're a laborist, you don't have to, I mean in the clinic they tend to give you a little bit lighter load than the permanent staff because you're not as familiar with their flow and their charting and their system, um, so they tend to give you a little bit more time in the beginning. So. Um, it's more patient focus, I feel like, compared to a permanent staff because there's so many other projects and dynamics and things they have to take care of and worry about that your primary goal, you're not here to fix the problems in the system, you are here just to take care of patients. So I do feel like I get more time with the patients than I would if I was hired by the staff. Um, there's tons and tons of locum assignments, especially the last couple of years. There, you just have to know how to look on ZipRecruiter, Indeed, know where the different traveling agencies, know what Google, Google search engine words to find these positions, um, and you have to just know where you're willing to go and not willing to go. If you want hospital, clinic, you want birth centers, you want home, you want certain states, you want certain parts of the world, um, are you doing it more for higher income and challenging positions? where there is a huge need and you can get overtime and work lots? Are you doing it because you want to go to Hawaii and it's more the location of the contract? So you just have to know what your goals are um, for doing that position. So some of the cons, I always stress to people, everything has pros and cons. Um, it's not your practice, it's not your rules. So when I'm running my own business and I'm hired by a practice, I have a very different perception of my purpose there than when I'm locum. I'm not here to fix their problems. I'm, they're not asking for my feedback and suggestions to improve the system. They want me to fill in short term for clinical care support and that's my purpose. Versus if I was hired on the team, you're gonna add to the meetings, you're gonna talk to the director more, um, you're going to be much more involved in the organization. So some people think that's a pro, some people think it's a con, um, but just being aware of it. It's not your practice, it's not your rules, maybe they do things super silly, as long as it's not a safety issue, you just smile and you take that style with a grain of salt. Um, Every time you do an assignment, it is stressful. There's new paperwork every three to six months when you're doing a new position. You have to consistently interview. Um, if you're stressing financially and you can't have huge gaps, like I tend to do three months and then take two months off, three months, two months off. And so I, it doesn't, and then sometimes I take longer off. So it's not, everybody's situation is different financially and their goals and why they're doing locums, but you have to learn a new facility, a new EHR system, a new culture, a new patient load of new dynamics. The first two weeks are very stressful of any locum assignment when you get started, but once you get a groove and once you get a style, you understand their weird charting things and their tasks that they have to do for admissions and discharge and certain consents and how you file things, it's a big learning curve quickly and some people are okay with that and some people are not. So you're always going to be looking for new jobs unless you get something um, that you want to be resourced and you stay on more established with the team. But usually after a year, you have to take a break from that facility because otherwise it doesn't stay as contract work anymore, especially the IHS facilities. I know of a lot of providers, particularly nurse practitioners, um, they'll do a year at an IHS and then they'll go three months somewhere else and then they'll come back to that facility for a year. And so they'll do this for years and years on end. Um, so they're almost like that hybrid permanent staff. So there are different ways to do it, but just knowing 
they're hiring you temporary and as soon as the need is completed they get the new person hired the maternity leave is done um whatever the scenario is covering for vacations in the summer you ha they don't need you anymore so you're always looking for another job if that's your goals um sometimes doing a lot of locums can burn you out compared to uh, the traditional healthcare system because you're learning and you're stressing and that work-life balance you're filling a need they're exhausted they're tired you're not coming in because the practice is just doing really really well um, and they tend to want you to do holidays and weekends and summers and christmas and thanksgiving because that's where they want their permanent staff to have the breaks from so you just have to watch for the signs of burnout boundaries is it a good idea to extend? Is there safety issues? Do I need to um, do less hours with my next contract? 36 to 48 is a big difference when you're doing labor is to consistently do three 12 hour shifts versus four 12 hour shifts. Um, to consistently do clinic, you're available five days a week. Um, so you just have to determine do I need a break in between the assignments for a month to rejuvenate or can I go back to back on assignments? Everybody's going to be different with that answer. So locum assignments are a really exciting thing to do, but you have to think about the short and long-term goals of why are you doing locum assignments. They're an awesome occupation niche um, place for midwives to fill in, but you have to think about your skills, your mindset, your personality. Um, am I good at reading contracts? Am I good at doing credentialing paperwork? Am I good at being a leader and filling in for tough situations with people I don't have um, that, that past experience and trust with yet? Um, can I fill in quickly for a scenario um, and, and not have an orientation and not be given a lot of guidance? You have to learn your and you have to learn why am I becoming a local midwife and what is that purpose do I want to travel do I want a short-term financial stream do I want to do this long term because I like the style of midwifery that locum assignments give you have to really understand yourself and really talk to other people that have done locum assignments